All right, guys, Aussie fans cannot wait for our next guest to get back in action. He's coming back UFC Fight Night 199 on December 4th, 5th in Australia and New Zealand. And he joins us live from the Mecca over here of Combat Sports in Footscray, Melbourne, Resilience Training Center, Jimmy Crute. The brood is in the building. Welcome back to Submission Radio. Thanks for having me on, boys. Always love coming on the show. Always a pleasure, man. Before we get into it, I gotta ask, what is what is the secret behind such a luxurious mullet? I see you sporting it. Uh, business in the front, party in the back. What, what's the Jimmy Crew tip for the mullet? Um, it's just a whole lot of <laughs> uh, it's just a whole lot of hard work and um, a lot of determination. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, not everyone can have a mullet like this. I think um, no. I think it's a lifestyle choice, not a not just a fad, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Usada, Usada's going to have to uh, do something about that mullet because it looks like he might give you a speed advantage, Jimmy. It's, That's a yeah. speed mullet right it's there. It's 100% a performance enhancer. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Dude, you were supposed to fight on October 2nd, right? But Jamal Hill was obviously injured. And then in November, you said on IG that there were no flights back. Uh, so here we are with the fight initially, or well, sorry, officially announced for December. Dude. How frustrating was it getting it, you know, pushed back again and again? And then how much of a balancing act was it to try and get a fight before, you know, the end of the year? Uh, it's a story of my life, mate. Um, there's, uh, there's been that many times in my career that, that I've wanted to be really active. But, you know, these things happen. Uh, it's not Jamal's fault. It's not my fault. Um, it's not the UFC's fault. It's just the way it is. And, you know, I had to manage the load of training. Um, I made that mistake when I fought Anthony and I was supposed to fight supposed to fight every month for like six months mm. um before anthony so um i didn't manage to load correctly for that one and it, i was so sick of training by the end of it so you know when the fight got postponed i had a big steak had a few beers had a few days off training um and just eased back into it now we're into uh week two of prep camp as people call it and um you know i'm already hitting pbs because i did all the right things so yeah we're good to go awesome man that sounds good and for people that don't realize it, over here in uh, Victoria and Melbourne, we're sort of on track to become the world record holder for days spent in hard lockdown. And um, I got to ask you, man, I mean, for me and Cass, it's been all right. We've been able to do submission radio remotely, but what's it been like for you again through this lockdown and sort of getting through it? I, I imagine the mullet and the beers had a bit to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm off the beers now for good. Um, <laughs> too many beers for me over lockdown, but um, it's a... It's pretty grim here. Um, we're lucky enough to be able to train. You know, professional athletes are considered essential workers. I don't know how that works, but it does. So um, I'm not <laughs> complaining about that. But yeah, um, nothing really changes for me. You know, I lock into training. I go home. I rest. I get ready for my next session. And um, there's no other distractions because of lockdown, which is a good thing in a way. But at the same time, sometimes you need those distractions to, you know, sort of break the monotony. But um, you know, we're making do with what we got. For people that don't realize, over here in Australia and in Victoria, we have so many great beers, man. I mean, people in the U.S. don't realize uh, the luxuries that we have over here when it comes to drinking beer. i got to ask you just quickly, man. I know you're off them now, but when you were on them, um, what does the Jimmy Crute Mount Rushmore of beer look like? What uh, do you have on there? Horses, mate. The, go- the golden horses, cotton jar. But um, no, it's something I want to um, sort of separate myself from. You know, I've got a big image of smashing beers and whatever but um it's not a good image i like to put out there you know sort of getting off the beers for a bit now and want to sort of promote a healthier healthier habit that's good man that's good when when did you sort of come to that uh i guess realization because it is it is kind of like a bit of a like aussie image people kind of look at aussies it's like oh yeah the aussies they like to have fun ty two of us is obviously flying that flag <laughs> pretty high we love we love ty but when did you kind of make the decision that you know i want to be a little bit more kind of business sort of thing I'm not, I don't. I don't even really give a fuck about my like all that stuff. It's just my personal, my personal stuff. You know, I don't. I don't like that. That is the way I'm represented, and you know, people when they think of Jimmy Crew, they think of some fucking bogan that just loves smashing piss. Which I'm not. That's not me. You know, um, I, I work really hard. I'm very de- dedicated, and I'm very disciplined. And um, you know, I sort of don't portray that side of me as much. Um. But, yeah, that's sort of I'd, – I'd rather my image to be more of who I am. Well, the other thing that uh, we want to celebrate with you, man, is you signed a new fight four-fight bout deal agreement with the UFC. We know Dana White is a big Jimmy Crew fan. He's talked to you about us before, but 
What does it feel like to have this new contract signed before this big fight in December? Ah, uh, sorry. What's it feel like to have this new full fight contract signed before the big fight in December? Yeah, it was um, it was a bit of back and forth, and I was super happy to come to a um, mutually beneficial agreement with the UFC. Um, you now there was a bit of, as I said, a bit of back and forth, and um, you know it was a bit, it's a bit how you going, but you know mix mix such a good bloke, and when you have a man they, instead of instead of talking shit and getting online and, and doing it that way, you know we had a man to man and talked down and talked about why we wanted certain things, and we came to an agreement, and I think that's the that's what's good about Mick and, and the UFC, you know. Um, they know that everyone's not everyone's um, not everyone's um, the same with like with us. We need more money because we need a freaking team. We got to travel. We got to do this and that. So they took all that into account, and yeah, I was super happy with the way we came to agreement. Mm, I mean, apart the money side, money aside, what was one of the key things that was important to you as you were signing the deal that kind of stood out to you? Was it the frequency of fights or anything like that that kind of you wanted to figure out before you signed the deal? Um, no, I think I think we're all on the same page now. Um, mm -hmm. They know I want to be more active, but it, you know it's not their fault that I haven't been able to be active. It's um, sort of the travel restrictions' fault, but you know I, I want to be more active. I want to. Um, I want to be able to fill in for short notice fights. I want to do all this. So, um, you know, they're well aware of that now, which is good. I was also wondering, man, because, I mean, it, who knows what's going to happen with the virus? There's a lot of restrictions and things going around. Obviously, resilience is one of the best gyms going around. But if you had to, would you look at possibly moving overseas and training there so you could fight more frequently? Or is Australia always sort of going to be the place that no, you want I'm to stay at and train, train at? I'm never going overseas. I'm never moving <laughs> There he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, so I, I would consider probably going over for a month or so, but I, w I wouldn't ever, I would never, um, obviously leave where I'm from and, um, we have the, we have the, um, structure and ability to, um, get, get a good camp out here, got the bodies we need and the coaching is the best in the world and I don't care who you match it against. We've got the best coaches in the world here and I, I wouldn't leave that. Um, and number one reason as well is I wouldn't leave that full fed. So. <laughs> What's the dog's name, Jimmy? I'll definitely, I'll definitely consider shooting over for a month or, or something just to try and pick up something short notice. Yeah, I was going to say, what's, what's the dog's name? Buddha. Buddha. Coach Buddha, head coach. Um, I was going to say, do you, so you were mentioning like the travel restrictions and stuff before. Do you know how you're getting back? Because, uh, you know, we still, yeah, yeah w w what's the deal? That's what, uh, so I'll get back reasonably, I think it's like two days or three days after the fight. Um, when I signed the fight in October, it was I wasn't going to be able to get back till the end of October. So I was going to be there for a whole month. And uh, I was prepared to do that, but you know, it's a big arc start to coaches. And yeah, it was going to be it was going to be a tough one. So Dan and everybody else was going to have to stay with you for that whole month, right? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. It would have been, um, oh, it would have been great company, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> Jake just, Jake's just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, thank God we didn't have to do that, right? Yeah. Funny like, yeah, what you can start an OnlyFans account tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so Jimmy, I was going to say, dude, so Jamal Hill, he's the fight in December. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts though, man. What do you think of his run in the UFC thus far? Yeah, he's um he's had a he's had a pretty good run. Um he should have been undefeated. Um well he was undefeated, but he, he should have had well, eight or nine wins in a row. Uh that no contest doesn't count as a no contest in my opinion. Um and yeah, it was um I sort of compare his fight with Paul Craig to my fight with Mesha Serkinov. Um, you know, got dragged into deep water and he'll either grow from it or or it'll bring his mind for too long, and you know I'm, I expect him to grow from it, and I expect to fight a better, better Jamal Hill than has ever been before. So, um, yeah, I, I rate his I rate his rise. I, I really respect him as an athlete and a fighter, and yeah, I look forward to sharing the cage with him. What did you think of that moment uh, when Paul Craig locked in the submission and he refused to tap, even though his arm was you know heavily dislocated? It was a crazy moment to witness. <laughs> I don't even realize, I don't even think he realized that his arm was dislocated, did he? Um, yeah, tough as fuck. Um, I, I, I thought he tried to tap, but he couldn't rage. But um, 
I don't know. I, he probably probably didn't. Um, but yeah, I I was I was so dirty because I loaded up on Paul Craig by sub. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> when it was a sub. Oh God. Um, obviously, you're un- unbelievable on the feet. You've also got a gr- your black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Dangerous everywhere. How do you actually see this matchup going when you sort of picture how this fight with Hill plays out? Um, he, um, I feel like he's going to try. I think he probably thinks that he has a huge striking advantage um, on me because I haven't really shown what I can do. Um, and that'll be the worst mistake he makes. He'll probably leave his chin up in the air and I'll knock him out. I was going to say, you know, and also how you were mentioning how he's probably going to be a better version of himself. Uh, did you catch sort of the the back and forth between him and Paul Craig before the fight where uh, there was a lot of kind of like mean mugging? Are you expecting anything like that before the fight? Um, oh, I couldn't give a fuck if there was or wasn't. Um, no, me and Jamal are pretty cool. You know, um, we uh, I saw him in Jacksonville and um, we sort of hung out for five minutes, talk, chat, chatted shit. Um, yeah, he's a really cool guy. I don't, I don't expect any of that. If there is, I'm just going to ignore it. I don't, I don't buy into that sort of shit. Um, but I think uh, so. I sort of laughed when when all that shit started happening with Paul Craig and him because you know, Paul Craig has a real good way of making you think that he's a bad guy before you fight him mm. when he's actually. So I sort of I could sort of um, of related to Jamal at that at, that, um, at the, uh, watching that whole thing unfold. Yeah, I was gonna say because Paul Craig's pretty intense before fights, right? But it doesn't really matter who it is; he's just always like that. <laughs> and you know what? I, I used to think it was a way of him getting into his opponent's head, but it's not. It's it's his way of performing at his best. And then also, like, Jamal was saying how he his loss, he called it, like, karma for disrespecting the game. So you got to think that the lead-up with you and him is going to be, you know, pretty smooth sailing. And I was going to say it's kind of similar to you and Anthony Smith, right? You guys got along before the fight. You guys got along after the fight. What's it like for you going in there with a guy who, you know, you're kind of on the same level with? Why am I at all? It's like it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change how hard I'm going to try and hit you. <laughs> you know, um, I, I could hate you. I could, uh, I could think you're a bl- good bloke. I'm still going to try and rip your head off. It, do- it doesn't matter. Um, it's just, I don't know. Um, fighting someone you like sort of has its challenges, but at the same time, I always feel like I perform better because I, I just want to have a good fight. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that's um, that's a good way of looking at it. If you just want to have a good fight, good performance, and, you know, go to war. When it, always, um, some of my sparring sessions are more entertaining than some fights because I like the guys I'm sparring and we're, tr- we're trying to take each other's heads off, you know? So, um, yeah, I think that's a good way of looking at it. Well, you're currently ranked in the top 15 with Jamal. I'm wondering, dude, like, if things go to plan, what, what do you want next uh, with a win over him? There's so many great names in that top 15 in the light heavyweight division for you to mix it up with. Um... I'm not really thinking past Jamal. Um, I've done that twice in my career, and both times it's come back to bite me on the ass. <laughs> so um, just gotta just gotta deal with Jamal Hill first. Um, obviously, obviously, I want there's a there's a path to the title that I want to take. But you know, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm thinking about taking out Jamal Hill, Jamal Hill um, on October fourth or fifth here. Yeah, that's right. Speaking of taking things out, imagine if you could eat your favorite cereals, but take out the sugar and the high calories. That's exactly what Magic Spoon does. I can't tell you how many times I browse the cereal aisles as an adult looking for delicious treats, seeing all the delicious cereals, the ones with the cinnamon and the marshmallows and everything, knowing that I couldn't have them because of the high calories and the high sugar. Enter Magic Spoon, the high protein, keto friendly, gluten free, soy free, wheat free, naturally flavored, totally delicious, childlike cereal for grown-ups isn't that right dennis oh man it's the best cereal ever and how about this zero grams of sugar 14 grams of protein and only four net grams of carbs in each serving and also only 140 calories uh magic spoon is definitely a game changer hey look seinfeld is coming to netflix so why not be a jerry seinfeld in your own life and enjoy magic spoon for breakfast lunch and dinner and click the link below to grab a variety pack and try it today and use the promo code submission at checkout to get five dollars off any order or go to magicspoon.com forward slash submission use that code submission save five dollars get magic spoon into into your life and change things forever that's right hey also here in australia uh it's september 
things are getting warm. It's getting warm here in Melbourne. Uh, summer is just around the corner, and uh, you got to be aerodynamic. You got to be smooth. You got to be beach ready. And the same thing applies to your balls. You don't want them looking like you know they just went ten rounds with Wolverine after using a, a rusty razor. Use the best grooming tool on the market, the Manscape. Lawnmower 4.0, the performance package 4.0 at the moment. It comes with not only the Lawnmower 4.0, it also comes with the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmers, which is an absolute godsend. It comes with the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, a Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. Uh, you're going to be loaded. You're going to be loaded and ready this summer, man. You're going to be hitting the clubs, hitting the streets, hitting Tinder, hitting all the dates, hitting everything. Uh, with the smoothest balls in town. And now you can get a sexy discount. Isn't that right, Dennis? That's right, man. With code word submission, get 20% off and free shipping. Now, make sure to take advantage of this great offer, man, because just like Casper said, when you get out of lockdown, you got to make sure the boys are ready to party. And there's only one company out there that can get you there, and that is Manscaped. Code word submission, 20% off and free shipping. Love the free shipping. Uh, but just going back to you, Jimmy, uh, what do you want to show in this fight? Because I know the Anthony Smith fight, it was one that, um, you know, you're looking forward to for so long, got dragged out for so long. And then in the fight, you had your successes, but then there was that weird ending. I imagine, uh, you know, there's a big part of you that kind of wants to right that wrong, so to speak. So what do you want to show in this one? Um... Just want to be more. I've got to be more active in this one. Um, sort of sat back against Anthony. I don't know why. I think I overrespected him a little, little bit too much. Um, and not not saying that that I should disrespect him, but I'm just saying that I um, you know, I've I probably didn't overrespect him per se. I probably under undervalued myself. You know, in mm. that fight. Yeah, just gotta just gotta stick to the game plan and um, yeah, just show that I'm not going anywhere. Um, what happened with Anthony happened, and um, yeah, I'm sort of I'm, I'm grateful for the whole experience. You know, I've learned so much from that, and yeah, um, I, I don't know what you want me to tell you, but I'm I'm just want to show that I'm coming to fight. Yeah, well, I mean, Anthony is back this weekend against Ryan Spann. Yeah. I'm, wa- I'm wondering, dude, what are you what are you expecting from this fight from this weekend? Um, oh, I think it's my ego really rooting for Anthony Smith. Obviously, he beat me, so I want him to win, but I. One, I really like Anthony, and he deserves to make his way back to the top. He, he deserves to win. Um, two, I think his skill set's a lot better than Ryan's. You know, Ryan's got the size and, and power, you know, he can always, and, and, and that nasty guillotine he can always catch. But, you know, I, I think Anthony's just a better fighter. He's more skillful. And, um, yeah, I think he gets it done, and I think he makes a really good run uh, once again. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, dude, we can't wait for December. We can't make, wait for Jimmy Crute to make that big return. As you wrap, man, I mean, 2021 probably didn't really go down the way that most of us wanted it to go down. As we go into sort of 2022 after this fight in December, I'd love to know, man, like if things went to plan, how many times do you think we'll see Jimmy Crute in there um, yeah. mixing it up in the octagon? So I wanted to have four, four fights this year. Um, but I, I barely got one. I barely got two, sorry. Um, so next year, I want to have four. That's my goal. Four fights. Nice, nice. Well, that's good. At this rate, you'll be and getting like... One short notice. I want, I, I've never... I've had... Yeah, I've never had a short notice fight, so I want to have a short notice fight. Really? What is it about the short notice fight that kind of uh, speaks to you? Because I, I just want to do it. I just want to prove that I'm ready, I'm ready all year round. Is that kind of also how you train and how you prepare yourself? You know, some fighters are kind of like, you know, you go through yo-yo diets, you go through like, okay, now I'm in camp. There's a very big difference between in camp versus out of camp. Are you the kind of guy where you're always sort of ready and prepared? Normally, I got, I got fat as fuck um, during my <laughs> Really? Um, what, what was the difference yeah. in, in kegs? Oh, fuck, you don't want to know. Um, <laughs> but I'm in shape now. It didn't take me long. I got back in shape. But I'm, I'm, I'm within arms reach of fight fight shape all year round except for in that little bit of lockdown that we just had i was fat as fuck do you have a preference like with the short notice fight would it be would it have to be say in australia or you'd be happy to even you know fly over to the states take a short notice I'd fight go, go to the states man i got no problem well, I'll Any tell you day, what. one anytime as i say well i'll tell you what there's always a backup slot for a title fight so if things go to plan man who knows we could see that happening next year, guys. Make sure to follow Jimmy on IG at Jimmy Crute UFC and, of course, on Twitter at Crute Jimmy. He fights UFC Fight Night 199 on December 4th, which is the fifth here, Australian New Zealand. Jimmy, man, we can't wait to see you back in this. Hi to all the boys at Resilience for us. 
I mean, what what a iconic and great place for combat sports there in Australia. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's the best gym in the country, I think. Thanks so much, man. Lots of love, Jimmy. Catch you later, man. Bye. Hey, boys.